What's up? How's it going, everyone? We'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. It should be fun, I think. What's everybody up to this? Say morning. Morning for me, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I know we've got people. What's up? All across the, uh, how's it going, everyone? The world. Let's see. Ayo. I didn't have, um, as always, I didn't have like me watching the stream muted, but now it is. <laughs> so I got a little feedback. So can you slide me all the answers? Yeah, hook uh, hook dev cam up with uh, all the answers. I'm also gonna change the quality of what I'm watching to like really low to 144p. How wild is that? Uh, Will Park codes. What's going on? Uh, Ayush Piyush. Uh, dev cam Mac, uh, shout out to Mac for, uh, setting this up. And, um, he had come up with the fact that it's been, it's my two year anniversary on YouTube. Although I don't think it's been 10 years since my first, uh, since my first video, I think my first video was in 2013 or 14. Um, but I guess it's 10 years since I like signed up for YouTube. So, um, so it's kind of cool. So we figured we'd hang out and, um, do some questions and uh, kind of see how they go. I intentionally didn't really look at these. Like I took a look at uh, really quickly the first one or two. And uh, so I don't know all the answers either. So this will be kind of a learning experience for uh, for all of us. So hopefully that will be kind of fun. Um, Andre, saludos from Bolivia. Gracias por venir. Glad to have you here. Um, and Torres asking, but uh, will you explain the answer for each of the questions after the quiz? Um, I will do my best. Uh, this is, these questions were created by Mac, um, who uh, is in the chat there. And um, I think most of these I will be able to. There may be some where I won't be able to. So uh, that'll be maybe a learning experience again for both of us, all of us. So it should be kind of fun uh, regardless. Yeah, first video was posted back in 2014-ish. I wonder... Um, let me, I'll switch over and show you all my screen really quickly. I wonder, does anyone know? Actually, before I go to this, does anyone want to guess at how many YouTube videos I have created? I actually don't know this number, uh, but if you have any guesses, throw those in the chat and then I'll pull up. Um, I'll pull that up. And uh, and we'll see. I, I have an idea, but I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, don't know for sure what it is. So if you have any guesses of how many, let me know. Um, Ryan McGovern is hanging out. He is tech gadget in a lot of places. And, um, he's one of the mods in the learn, build, teach discord. We are uh, looking to build out learn, build, teach uh, site where, um, we're going to open it up for Hacktoberfest. So if you're not in the learn, build, teach discord, you can go to learn, build, uh, to get to, uh, to get into the discord and join a pretty fun, uh, fun community. Yeah. Cool. We got a couple of uh, comments here about videos kind of all over the place. We got 490, 340, 100, 650, uh, 340 again, 345. You could do like the price is right thing and do like 346. Uh, let's see. I, my guess is somewhere around, um, I was going to guess somewhere around 300 and Mac is saying, um, Mac is saying 340, which uh, seems about right. It's also hard to believe. That's a ton of uh it's a ton of videos but it's the kind of stuff that i i just really um i just really enjoy so how i don't even know how you see this does it show you look at all these things anyway i trust that 340 is right i don't even know how you actually see it on here but that's pretty cool yeah um discord invite for now and then hopefully we'll have um have an actual website for learn build teach to highlight the cool stuff that people are doing so, um, do y'all want to get started? Uh, what I will have to do is kind of kick this thing off and then I will give you a, um, I'll give you a link in the chat, uh, where, that you can use to get into, um, Kahoot. And we'll have a little bit of, we'll have a little bit of a struggle here with, um, oh, if you search my name, you can get the videos. Cool. Uh, we'll have a little bit of struggle with the delay on YouTube. The delay is bigger than Twitch. Um, so I have a little bit of like me trying to figure out how long I need to wait for stuff, but let's go ahead and I'm going to kick this off. Uh, so this is kind of every player for themselves. Um, it's loading a pin. Jeff, I thought my wife was coming in here. Okay. So here is the game pin. I'm going to post this into the chat. Um, just in case, and I'll leave it up here for a few minutes. So, 
Um, actually, will I be? Is this screen? I don't even know. Is this? I this is probably like an admin screen that I'll be showing. So I, I guess I'll just answer out loud. I don't know. Um, anyway, so uh, Kahoot dot it, and then when you get asked for the pin, it's in the chat. It's five six nine five three eight four. Um, this is cool. I love like real time stuff. I really want to build something like this. I think this would make a great demo to do like a, a real time quiz thing with people. I think that'd be super sweet. But I'll give um, we'll give a couple of a couple of minutes for people to get in, in here. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, Def Cam's got the rocket. I like it. Yes. Um, <laughs> I think Jess is Jess is my wife. She's hanging out. Um, yep, good screen. Yeah, I this would be such a cool thing to build. Uh, I've just got a million things that I want to build, including while it's loading. Um, I'll give a shout out for something that I'm working on with um, Amy Dutton, the uh, co-host of the podcast. If, if people will listen to uh, the Compressed FM podcast, if you haven't, you should at compressed.fm. Uh, but we're working on an advent of CSS and advent of JavaScript courses for December. And what this is, is you'll get a new challenge of CSS or JavaScript every day uh, leading up to Christmas. So it'll be 25 challenges. And um, and you can get the challenges for free. So they'll send you, we'll send you those in your email for free. And then uh, if you want the solutions, you can uh, pay for the source code and for like video solutions from me for the JavaScript side and then from Amy on the CSS side. So that's kind of cool. Um, this is just a placeholder landing page. We will uh, we'll be building these out more officially in a minute, but just kind of wanted to get a, a quick landing page up for people. Somehow the pen isn't working for me. I don't know. Um, so Piyush, do you have, do you have the right, um, so you went to kahoot.it and then entered in the pin 569-5348. Uh, the good thing is you'll be able to see, this will go really well with advent of code. Yes, exactly. Yep. Um, yeah, we should. Uh, we should definitely do some like co-branding with that. Okay, I people I think can start after the fact. Um, so I think we've probably got enough time to go ahead and start. Uh, so we'll start, hopefully people can um, join after it officially kicks off. But also, um, also you should be able to watch like from my computer as well, like as you're watching the stream. So you can just kind of participate that way. Uh, okay, uh, let's go ahead and start. I'm a little nervous. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what we're getting ourselves into. We'll see. Three, two, one. I don't know how long we have for these questions either. Uh, quiz time. JavaScript was initially known as Action Script, uh, Espresso, Latte Script, Live Script. Um, I am going to go Action Script. Um, I actually don't know this for sure, uh, but that is my guess. It, I don't even know. Can I guess? I think I'm out of it. I think I don't count. So let's see what the, what's the answer? Live script, okay, I did not know that. This is, yeah, this delay is a lot, um, unfortunately. So, eh, that sucks. Um, I don't know if there's a better way around it. I figured since this is YouTube, this stream is inspired by being on YouTube for 10 years, it should be on YouTube, but the delay is, uh, is pretty heavy. So I apologize for that. But um, anyway, so live script, I didn't know that. Uh, I think there, is there also a thing called action script? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But let's go to the next question. Uh, cool. We got um, Shaol. Shaolin is in the lead. And then Zulzul and Kyle uh, coming up after that. Cool. I know the delay. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'll be quicker. <laughs> and the first browser to ship LiveScript was wooden, wouldn't be Chrome, wouldn't be Internet Explorer. I don't know what Mosaic is, to be honest. Um, and again, like I don't even get to vote, so I guess I should just let y'all do, but I, I will talk it out uh, myself. Um, Netscape Navigator is my guess, yeah. Um, so what's the... So... Espresso doesn't, as far as I know. So someone is saying um, unplayable, I'm afraid. You should still be able to... Like you should still be able, well, how, I'm trying to think what this is like on your end. You're not seeing the questions in time. Okay. 
before. Well, if you, I'm confused at how this would work. Wouldn't it be like if you're if you have the page open, if you're not watching the stream? Oh, like I will probably give the answer before. Is that what? Increase the timer for the questions. Let's see. I don't know that I have full screen. Rats. I don't know if I have any setting issues. What is it like on your end? The questions aren't showing up at all. The questions just aren't showing up? Oh, lame. Uh, well, that doesn't work very well. Thanks for giving me the feedback. I didn't know. Um, so you never saw you never saw one. Hmm. Okay. I wonder if <laughs> love you too. Thanks. Well, my wife was able to give me some specific feedback. Um, no, we only see colors, not the question. Okay, cool. We only see a remote basically. Um, interesting. Okay. So lock this game to prevent, I don't need to lock it. Um, so what we can do maybe is like, we won't be able to see the real time answers, but we can kind of answer it together. So if, um, if we want to like you not play with the link and then we can just do it from my screen, I'm going to, I'm going to like, hopefully let that go through the feedback cycle to see, um, to see what's going on. So participants have to watch the stream and all of the answer buttons show up, but I don't think, yeah. So I don't think those would match up because my screen is going to be is going to be when they see my screen, it's going to be behind. So what I would say is let's just, um, we'll just, we'll just everybody focus on like the stream, if that makes sense. So like, don't, don't pull open the actual Kahoot, which is really unfortunate because that's part of the fun I realize. Um, uh, but, um, I think we can, I think we could just stick with, um, if everybody watches the stream, you'll be able to see it up here. Um, and you can, answer it to yourselves. I don't know. But if, if you're all watching the stream and not at co in Kahoot directly, hopefully timing wise, it will work out a little bit better. I'm going to wait and see what people think about that. I might also, let me see if Mac is on discord to see if he has any suggestions on what to do. Dum, 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 dum. Um, isn't there a game option to enable questions on player screens? I would have, yeah, I don't know. Can I, I don't know if I can manage it at this point. Kyla Gregory's in the chat. What's up, Kyla? Um, Kyla, I have something I want to ask you to participate in. If you are, it's pretty non-invasive, I think. <laughs> um, but I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to you soon to see if you'll, um, you will participate in something uh, with me for uh, for something kind of cool coming up. I'm trying to up the limit, the time to answer. Uh, for me, only colors, yeah. So yeah, I say I say let's just um, everybody close Kahoot. I, sorry, um, we'll kind of and Mac asked me if I wanted to test this before going live, and I was like, no, we'll just do it. It's easy. I've seen people do this, so I apologize. Um, so questions and answers on players' devices. If you can't at this point though, yeah, it might be too late. Uh, open stats for nerds by right clicking on video. Live latency is 26 seconds. That's a lot. Yeah. All right. So let's do this. Um, we can install the app. So let's do this. Let's just stay like everybody watch my screen and then I will pull up the questions and you can, um, you can kind of answer in YouTube chat if you want to, uh, that will be a little bit behind too, unfortunately. Um, but uh, I'll try to pause at each answer uh, to give our give ourselves some time to to discuss. So um, everybody just watch here in the stream. I'm going to go to the next question and we won't have a leaderboard, unfortunately, unless you're still participating, which you can, but most likely it, it won't work very well. So true or false? Ryan Dahl is the original author of Node.js. I am pretty sure I know the answer to this one. And uh, y'all can chime in in the chat. Um, so this should be this should be true. So Ryan Dahl is the author of Node.js, and um, yeah, Mac, no worries. Uh, the delay, yeah, I've done Kahoot with people 
on Zoom. I haven't done it on a live stream like this, um, especially on YouTube where the delay is so much bigger. So anyway, we'll do we'll do the best we can. Uh, thanks everybody for hanging out um, for uh, for a while and kind of sticking through this anyway. But uh, so Reindahl is the original author of Node.js. He also is the one who has broken off and done Dino, I believe. Uh, fun fact. Uh, so that's kind of a new, a new Node-ish backend uh, server type thing. Cool. All right. We got one person answered in the chat. Two people answered in the chat. Um, again, we'll have a delay here, but that's okay. So uh, let's do uh, the next one. Some people are still able to answer, which is good. All right, let's do which one of these features what is not introduced in 2015. So ES 2015 is uh, ES6. So we've got arrow functions, we've got let and const, we've got async await keywords, and then we've got generators. I know the answer to this, but I'm gonna hold off. Angel next, there's too much delay when you start the question, the time has ended for me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I think we'll, uh, what I'm doing, what I'm suggesting people is just like watch, uh, watch my screen and we'll kind of just like, you don't have to participate in Kahoot directly, just watch my screen and participate that way. Um, so the uh, ES 2015, uh, otherwise known as ES6, uh, is um, is one of the biggest um, the biggest launches, the biggest uh, versions of JavaScript that has come out with a ton of changes, a ton of uh, or a ton of additional features, including arrow functions. Let and const was new in 2015. Generators uh, were a thing in um, in ES 2015, ES6. Although they like I've never used one, I, I don't understand them. Um, async await actually came out in ES7. So I think it was uh, 2000 and ES7 or introduced in ES2017. Yeah, I knew it was later. I don't know. Do they call it ES8? Do they do that? I don't know. Um, but anyway, yes, uh, async await was later. So that was uh, not in 2015. Cool. <laughs> I think I use, if you're able to continue to answer these and not run out of... Um, not run out of time to answer, then you'll you'll run away with the score. <laughs> Promises were introduced in 2015, but we had to wait for uh, JavaScript number is a I I don't know I, I don't know this one at all. Um, ter, the our most likely floating points and I don't 32 64 I go 64 I don't I really don't know huh I'm right. That was a guess, by the way. Um, so floating points, I like this. I knew because JavaScript numbers can have decimal points, which floating uh, floating numbers do have decimal points. I really had no idea between thirty two and sixty four bit. So red, I think. Yep, Daniel, you got that one right. It looks like. Um, yeah, we'll we'll experiment with uh, different things in the past, uh, so we can try um, we can try a different platform in the future. Whatever I'm answering, it is getting correct. <laughs> Uh, Pros guessed uh, 32 floating. Yeah, so um, I usually, you just guessing and it's working out every time. <laughs> we got DJ Khaled is in here as well. This would be a lot more fun if we didn't have the delay. So I promise I will come back and do one of these on Twitch at some point if y'all are interested. Um, not right now. Uh, so we'll kind of finish this out this time. But in the future, I will do one of these on Twitch. Um, actually, if anyone, uh, so Max set up these questions. If anyone wanted to set up, a Kahoot uh, that they thought would be useful, um, then you can send that to me and we'll run that on Twitch next time for a better experience. All right, let's go next. This is a bonus round. It's like the feature introduced in ES 2018. We just talked about something in here that's not here. Okay, so array includes object entries, nullish coalescing, uh, promise finally. I've got my guess. I'm gonna wait until it goes out. Um, I feel like, so my guess is nullish coalescing, which is not right. And I think null, nullish coalescing is even newer. So e nullish coalescing may be a 2020 thing. So this looks like promise finally is the answer. Um, I don't actually know what promise finally is. So let's actually look that up. Uh, just like after, after it's, it's like a, like after it's done, then you can do whatever you want. Not correct. Uh, finally returns a promise. So where does this come into play? Finally, yeah. So that's kind of what I was thinking after after the then or the catch, like whichever way uh, it goes. 
it will then trigger this finally part, I believe. So when a promise is settled, either fulfilled or rejected, the specified callback function is executed. This provides a way for the code to be run whenever the promise has been dealt with. So yeah, if you need to do something, like if you open a database connection or something, and um, and uh, try catch is the exact same thing, try catch finally. Um, so same thing. So if you open a database connection and it either succeeds or it fails, in both cases, you might want to close out that database connection. So you can do that inside of the finally. So yeah, just like uh, just like try catch. Cool. Basically a try catch finally. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Awesome. Uh oh. Um Sujit has gone ahead. Let's see. This is I, I really wish logistically this works a little bit better, but I think this is cool. So we'll we'll have to do this in the future. Choose the odd one out. Um do go to yield and static static i i don't know i'm not sure about this um final question light thank you james for this amazing live session i'm glad you're enjoying it sorry that there's some logistical issues but it still still seems kind of fun so the odd one out um what is the yield keyword yield keyword javascript this one, I don't know. Pause and resume a generator function. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know about, um, I don't know about yield because I don't know about that. I was thinking that each one of these had to do with like pauses of flow, but that's not, that's not really right. Um, go to is not a JavaScript keyword. Okay. Yeah. Great. Cool. Um, static, you can isn't static for Java. So you have static in, in several languages. Uh, do you have static in, is it, it may just be TypeScript. Static JavaScript keyword, let's see. So you can use the static keyword to define a static method or class in JavaScript with just regular JavaScript, cool. Um, in, uh, these are regular classes. So do people know what static means? Uh, static means that you don't have to have an instance of that object to be able to call that function. So if you notice here, like a lot of times you would call the, the constructor to create an instance of this class with static method object and then use it to call um, that function. In this case, you can just use the class name and then dot static method um, or static property and method. So you don't have to actually create an instance of that. Difference between map reduce find and filter, um, those are, you can search for those. Uh, map will iterate through each object and transform it or each item in the array and transform it. Reduce will um, take, like iterate through an array and build up one specific thing. Usually it's like a number or an object or something that it builds up to transform that data in some way. Filter will filter data and then find will go and find a specific one. Prehistoric Redux users recognize yield. But yeah, I, I do not. So I guess I'm not a prehistoric Redux user. <laughs> Which operator takes three operands? Uh, let's see, the ternary operator, logical or bitwise and the logical and. So the ternary operator, I guess, depending on how you define three operands, you have the condition and then you have if the condition, then this one, then this one. So I guess that would be three. I would assume it would be the ternary. Um, <laughs> uh, Jofen or Yofen? Um, yeah, that's a lot of, a lot of the exact same question. So, um, I might have to, do I have, hi, I might have to put you in a timeout. Uh, so if, yeah, uh, question asked and question answered, those are easily searchable, uh, cause those are very common things as well. So, uh, so yeah, refrain from asking that one again. Yeah. Ternary operator here. So ternary has the condition. And then if that condition is true, it does this thing. If it's not true, it does this other thing. So those three things are uh, the three operator or three operands. Cool. True or false? Array prototype flat was introduced in 2019. Uh, I'm thinking it's newer. I'm thinking it's 2020. I'm going to go false. No, it was true. Okay. Shows you how much I know. I've actually never, um, I've actually never used flat myself, but what flat will do, see if we can get an example up here, uh, JavaScript array flat. Um, 
it should it should flatten out an array of nested objects. So if you have uh, if you have an array of objects in each one of those, um, or excuse me, an array of arrays, it will take all the elements out of the nested arrays and flatten them out into one array. So you can see here, like um, you got zero, one, two, and then array with three and four in it. It flattens it out so you get zero, one, two, three, four, all in one array. Yeah. Um, Andrew Usher is in the chat. Andrew is uh, a local to Memphis. I, at least I assume so. I haven't seen you in like two years now because of COVID, unfortunately. Um, but how's it going, Andrew? It's great to, great to see you on, uh, on YouTube. Thanks for coming to hang out. Andrew is, uh, I would say a really good JavaScript and react developer. Um, so I bet he would know a lot of these answers. Will, after using Webpack and Babel so much, I realize I have no clue what the ES specs are. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, I think I'm in a in a similar uh, similar boat. So I know some of the things, especially like ES6 was so big and there was so much content around it that I feel like I know those features fairly well. But going beyond that, um, I'm not exactly sure. Abneesh, we are doing, uh, we're doing a Kahoot quiz, but uh, we're just kind of watching it on my stream. Um, is cool number equal to eight? Is... Oh, I don't know. Two to the third, is that right? So two times two is four, um, times two is eight, yes. False, so it's false. Uh, this is one, I think, um, let's see. Is this operator JavaScript? Maybe it's not the exponent JavaScript. Does it have a reference to this? I don't know. Um, I think, I think Mac might have to jump in on this one. Um, also the question about, um, question about flat and spread, almost the same, not exactly. Um, spread will take what's in an array and like basically use them to like copy those elements to another array, if that makes sense. Um, or object properties, like you could get, um, you can get object properties. You get the key value pairs out of an object to put them in other places anyway. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit different. Um, got to jump in a meeting, Kyla, have a great day. Um, yeah, see ya, Kyla. So uh, Mac is saying this is the bitwise XOR operator. Bitwise XOR operator JavaScript. Still in Memphis, fortunately, everything's been good. It's been a crazy two years though. We definitely need to catch up soon. Yeah, Andrew, I hope to see you at like some sort of um, sort of, some sort of in-person meetup at some point soon. Uh, that would be great. Uh, a couple of people were confused by the operator here. So set each bit to one, if only one of the bits, if only one of the two bits is one. So um, I did digital logic in college and we went through and, or, nor, nots, that sort of stuff. Um, and, 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 and. There, it's kind of fun. It's kind of wild and it really helps you think through logic just in general and helps you, I think helps write logical code or break down problems into logical uh, things. So um, here, uh, no no code to join. I think it's easier to just follow here um, on the stream instead of trying to do it because there's such a delay. Um, so two will be zero one and three will be one one. Um, yeah, so anyways, bitwise operations, not something I use almost ever other than and and or like I, I couldn't tell you the last time I've used any of these, uh, but they should, they could certainly be useful. And I spent a lot of time on those in class. Mahir, yeah, uh, asking for the pin again. Yeah, I would just follow along. Uh, just pay attention in the stream. I think it would be easier. Although some of the people are participating, but uh, actually the pin is down here. So if you want it, but just know it probably isn't going to work very well. Five, six, nine, five, three, four, eight. And that's because of the delay that we have. All right, what does the sub to James Q quick function return? Uh, let subscribers equals three return plus plus uh, subscribers. I'm, I'm curious about this one. I should know this one, but I'm curious if y'all know this one. Um, so I don't know if people know the difference between the, uh, like, what is it called? The pre increment and post increment. So since it was a pre increment, it will increment that variable before it returns it. So if it was three, it will increment it first because it's plus plus. It will increment that first and then return. Uh, otherwise, it will, uh, if you did post increment, it would do, uh, it would take three, it would return that and then it would increase it. So in this case, uh, it does become four because it uh, makes sure to pre, uh, pre increment it before it returns. 
Uh, where is my mouse? There it is. Uh, Gasan, I hope this is the right place to push my argument. I will be happy to see DevOps like Docker and Kubernetes in the future's tutorials. You're not very likely to see that on my channel, to be honest. I, um, that's not the kind of, not the kind of content that I focus on. Uh, so you're not very likely to see that. Um, there are, there are some people that do a lot of Docker stuff that are really, really good though. Um, so I would do, do some search for some other, uh, other content creators. I, I'm not going to be able to help you out too much there, unfortunately. All right. Let's see. True or false? This function returns Gretel. Try. Interesting. That's an interesting flow there. I've got my guess. I think, I, but I'll wait. Um, I'll say it at the last second so you don't think I'm lying after the fact. Um, so I believe it will return Hansel because after you do this Hansel first, um, it will not trigger the, uh, the finally. So if you had not done a return, or actually no, it returns Gretel. Interesting. So this is this is something that I wasn't quite clear on. Um, I wonder if that's true. So one of the things we can do actually, do I have, let's open up an instance of VS Code and we should try these things out. I don't know why we haven't been doing this. Uh, so let's do, let's open this up big. Return both. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm honestly kind of surprised by that. I did not know that. Um, so let's do, I'm going to open up the Quoka extension. This is a great extension in VS code. I highly recommend trying it and my computer is being slow because I'm streaming. It's, it's a whole thing. Uh, did that not Gosh, Is it still trying to load that file? Maybe I won't be writing code for you. Uh, why Ajax rather than normal API calls? Um, let's see, let's do the new JavaScript file. Is this going to open or is this going to, may, maybe I won't be able to do this. Uh, finally is final. So yeah, it makes sense. Well, in some ways it makes sense, but typically the return actually gets you out of, um, gets you out of the function. Ooh. Okay. I didn't try to do that. Some function equals. So let's do try and return James and then finally return quick. So that syntax work and then let's do a console log of some function. Uh, and then call the function, not just state it. So this does return quick. Interesting. Um, yeah, online sandbox might be easier. So maybe I could do a code pen or something. Um, yeah, so it's really interesting. I would have thought the return would actually clear us out of the actual function, but maybe that return is just scoped to the try and then it's still, but then how do you get interesting? That's yeah. I would not have expected that. I would have expected the return to get us out of this function, even though, uh, even though the finally is there, but Hey, you learn, I'm learning. That's the good thing. And we get to talk about it along the way. Uh, Gabriel or Gabrielle, I don't know which one, Gabriel probably, um, the dot finally is always returned. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's cool. Finally, uh, and, um, Omro is saying the same thing. Yeah. Once the return is it, shouldn't that function complete? That's what I would have thought. Yeah. But cool stuff. Um, throw in the try. It should still return Gretel. Yeah. It, based on this, um, based on what we just saw, even if it did, uh, success or uh through an error uh it looks like the finally would still be called yep uh parse int can get quirky what will it produce in this case i probably don't know the answer to this <laughs> um parse int of two things so this is parsing it in base 16 so it will become something like uh well actually not a number. No, yes, not a number because K is not a valid, maybe not. How in the world did that work? Okay, I've got to try this one because I'm not sure how that works. So typically that second second parameter is what base you want to parse that in. And if it's base 16, that means you've got letters. How many? That means you've got zero through nine. And then you start at A. So you go A, B, C, D, E, F. Is that 16 or 15? Um, so zero through nine and then A through um, 
A through whatever. So let's, I'm not sure about this. Uh, let's do console log um, integer console.log integer parse int. Or is it just parse int? Do you have to call it integer? I'm not sure. Um, F equals 15. Yeah, but my question was the K. Oh, it will stop parsing. Okay, so that I guess that's the answer. It will stop parsing after encountering a star. Had no idea about that. Um, it breaks up the star. How would y'all... Man, that is like a very quirky thing. How would y'all know that? So it's like parsing F. So a hexadecimal... Wow. I had no idea it would stop parsing at a star. That's wild. I would have thought it would look at that and say... Because I like... Again, it's trying to parse it in base 16. So F makes sense. Uh, just parse it. Yeah. Um, so I can skip that. But um, base 16, F works. And then if it gets to the second thing, um, I thought it would have gone not a number, but apparently not. So I don't know. Yeah, that's cool. What a weird implementation detail. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a little quirky there. Here's a classic. Four, five, six should be the result. Uh, four, five plus six yes it should be <laughs> but now i'm starting to second guess everything so correct so uh, when you have a string that's four or five and then you try to do uh, addition with a number javascript says like hey you can't do that between different types let me try to convert one type to another so it converts number to a string and then it concatenates so it does four or five and then adds on adds on six to give you the string of four five six so that one i got Read MS MDN doc on parsent. Yeah, cool. Console log built into VS Code shortcut. Um, yep, Justin. So you can uh, for me, it's maybe log works as well. Um, is that right there? Log to the console. Yeah, it does work there. Um, maybe I created. I think CLG is maybe my own version. I can't remember. Uh, but it does the same thing. So I usually do CLG. But I'm like my my VS Code is moving so slowly because of the stream that it's kind of holding me back. True or false, and this one should evaluate to 11. Oh gosh, what does, uh, does true convert to one? I guess so, because it wouldn't be zero, I don't think. But now I'm not sure. What does true, or no, it will, if you're trying to do, it should convert. Oh, it will probably just convert true to a string. So it will probably be one true. Um, so let's try that. So let's do uh, one plus true. Console is not a function, that's right. Log, uh, one true, yeah. So it'll take uh, the Boolean true, convert that to a string, and then it will um, add on the one. So it'll be the string one plus the string true, and you get one true, which makes sense. Why am I getting a second? What is this extra piece up here? What is that? I don't know what that extra log was that I had. Weird. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's kind of cool. So it will convert. Yeah, it just converts it to true and then does string concatenation. Yeah. This is a, this is a fun parts of JavaScript. All right. What's the mystery variables value? Let mystery equals array five. Empty array with length five. Array with five null items. Just type error array with a single five item. So this should produce an array of five items, but I don't know what's in the array. I don't know if it's null items or empty array with link five. Empty array with link five. Cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, or I, I knew more or less what it would do. And there's also, so you can do, um, so let's take a look at this one. So if you do, uh, what was the code snippet? Um, Rats, what was, what was the code snippet that was just there? Is it new array five? Is that what it was? Is that what we did? Okay, so an array of five with, it looks like nothing in it. And then I think you can call, if you take that array and call dot fill with zero, now you can fill it with a certain thing. So you could fill it with 10 if you wanted to. So it creates the array of length five and then goes ahead and fills in each, each, uh, each item. So empty array with length five instead of null item. So that's really interesting because it displays. 
when we call new array five, it displays that thing. So it knows it has five items. And I guess there is just the difference between literally, literally nothing versus null, which null is like meant to represent nothing. So that's kind of interesting. Doop, doop, doop. Cool. These are fun. I like this. I wonder if Jess, are you still watching? My wife is in the other room. She was watching for a little bit. Another classic. Uh, what is the return? Oh, the result is yes. False. <laughs> um, how does, does it do, uh, how does JavaScript numbers do this? Let's test it out. So 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, not right, 0 point. Oh, okay. See, this gets into some interesting, this is the kind of stuff like I would have, um, <laughs> I would have learned about in college, but wouldn't be super helpful at this point. I couldn't even explain to you where the, where the four comes from, but yeah, it gets so like infin, infinitesimal. It's such a small thing that it basically comes out to, to 0 0.3. So if you did a, a math dot round, then you would get uh, zero. Can you, how do you tell math dot round to do? Maybe you can't, can you tell param x the value to be rounded to the, ne oh, it just, it only rounds to the nearest integer. Can you round to, Decimal, F round. This may be what I'm looking for. F round, math dot F round, and then we'll pass in like two decimal places. Is that returns the nearest? Never mind. No, that's not right either. I don't know. Uh, that's the float of JS. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the crux of the problem is that numbers are represented in this format as a whole number times the power of two. Rational numbers whose denominator is not a power of two cannot be ex exactly represented. Interesting. Cool. Um, ceiling would do, so floor and seal would, should do integers. So they would round it to an integer, not, or yeah, to an integer, not to a decimal, I don't think. Yep. Gabriel seems like he, or uh, they have um, gotten a few of these right. Um, some of the more detailed ones and Leonardo got that one, right? Are y'all, would you consider yourself to be, um, to be really, uh, really deep JavaScript people. These are a couple that I would not expect, uh, normal JavaScript developers to know, including myself. So that's, that's pretty impressive. All right, we're at 17, almost, uh, almost done. True or false. The inline arrow function returns undefined. Unless there's something different about arrow functions in general, um, if you don't specify a return, then it re a function returns undefined by default. So my guess is yes, it returns undefined. So we'll see. Cool. Yep. So if you um, if you have a function and you don't specify a return value, and you call it console log some function, uh, it should return undefined. So if you don't specify a return value, then, um, then, uh, what am I saying? <laughs> if you don't specify a return, then it will be undefined. Yeah. Um, oh, Gabriel did a, a challenge a week ago. Nice. So you were studying up, you were preparing, even though this wasn't announced, you knew it was coming. I like it. Um, let's go back to the array dot fill. Or excuse me, uh, let's do a new array of five and let's do put that in parentheses and then call the zeroth item um, and then uh, log that out undefined. So yes, I guess that makes sense. So that would be, so I guess a more specific answer to the question than Mac would be for the arrays. Um, or the, yeah, the new array would be, is it, I think technically you would want your answer to be, um, specifically an array of undefines or an array of nulls, because if you do just an array 
uh, an empty array of length five, empty is, is relative. So if you're able to nail down like specific terms in JavaScript, like undefined versus null, that may help add a little bit of clarity. So yeah. And return makes it void. Um, it doesn't make it void. Well, it won't return void. I don't, I, I assume that would return undefined as well. Let's see. Uh, looks like undefined still. So if you do a return with no value, it's almost the same um, as doing uh, no return at all, I think, yeah. Yeah, uh, someone's asking, uh, Chi is asking, what's the extension to show the output like that? This is the Quokka extension. It's very fun, very nice. I've got a video on YouTube if you wanna check it out about setting up the Quokka extension. So, uh, all right, two more questions left or yeah, I think so. Two more questions left, let's see. What will get logged this time? Let's see, uh, example, um, so it will sort it and then it will log example, interesting. So the trick here is the side effect of sort. And I'm thinking that sort doesn't actually affect the original array. So I think it's going to spit out the original array, which is red. Uh, it is not, so that does, wait, did I look at that wrong? Show, what's the show? Oh, show me media, yeah, show the original image so 10 oh i didn't even example dot sort now i'm confused console log example so this looks like it sorted it in string um daniel i do not have any videos about generators and i know nothing about generators um console or chrome's console would show it as a legit empty array yeah, um, but if you actually log out what the item is, I bet in Chrome it would still say undefined as well, but uh, that's all pretty specific stuff. So I'm assuming what this means is, and it looks like a couple of people got this right. Um, it looks like this is doing a sort based on string. So maybe array.sort, maybe an array sort only does string based sorting and can't sort numbers. Although I kind of find that hard to believe. I would have thought it could. So let's do, let's do an array equals. And then what do we have? 10, 1, 6, 3, 10, 1, 6, 3. And um, let's, let's do, what did you do? Um, array.sort and then log out the array. And this does come back as one ten three six, which I think I think sort uses Unicode comparison by default. Um, okay, yeah, that makes sense by default. So the other thing you could do then, if you wanted this to work um, based on numbers, yeah. So it's converting to uh, it's converting to that. So if you wanted to uh, actually sort this by numbers, you could do uh, your callback function. So you could call um, two parameters, A and B, and then for each one, um, for each number, you want to be able to compare it to its neighbor and you can return A less than B. So in this case, um, oh, actually it's not a true or false. It's a zero or, or it's a positive or negative, I believe. So let's try this again. So, um, A minus B. So there we go. So A minus B, if A minus B, is greater than zero, then um, if B is greater than zero, it's gonna move that thing to the right. If it is, uh, if it was B minus A, it would sort this in reverse order, B minus A. Uh, so this will sort it in reverse order. So anyway, I that's kind of cool. Um, a, B, A minus B. Yep, Israel's got it in the chat too. Yeah, so you can you can define your custom one. I would have assumed that the built-in sort could handle numbers as well, but apparently it can't. It's just strings. Uh, boy, do I love default JavaScript behavior. Yes, this is the kind of quirky stuff that like you think you know and then you get into it and you're like, oh, I didn't know it did that, so. Um, yeah, so hopefully that was helpful. I think that's kind of cool. Um, JavaScript is, is a weird, weird world. So, uh, what this is saying, like B minus a is basically saying if a 
is less than B. So if 10 is, no, if 10 is greater than one, it's gonna stay over here. I always get this confused, the B minus A or A minus B. Usually I just write it the first time and then see if it does what I think it uh, should. Let's actually see, I don't think I'm using the synth one. Uh, let's see, I think I've switched to something else. Uh, preferences, color theme. This is Moonlight 2, which I like. And then I also had been doing uh, Midnight Synth from uh, from Eric Kelly and the Learn, Build, Teach Discord. No parsent required, even though it does string by default. Um, well, so gobbinobber. Um, so if you don't specify your own sort function, then it does convert it to strings. But if you specify your own sort function, I'm specifying, um, I'm not, I don't need to change it because it's not going to make any assumptions for me. It's just going to do what I tell it to. Automatic conversion due to the minus. Um, no, so what it does is it looks for, it looks for the difference between B and, and A. So basically it's saying like, if you return a negative value here, then um, if you return a negative value here, then that means um, A should, oh God, I always get this confused. You either return a positive number, a negative number, or a zero. If it's zero, those two things are the same, they can stay. Um, if it is a negative number, this number moves down, or if it's a positive number, that number moves up in the list. So in this case, if this thing is a, if this is a, um, this is a positive, if this is a, what am I trying to say? If this is a negative number, then A will stay. If it's a positive number, A will move down the list. If that makes sense. I think there's a redundant space before sorting function. Oh. Um, yeah, there is. Doesn't need to be there. Um, is bubble sort right? Uh, not sure what you mean about um, about bubble sort being right. Let's see if we can. I'll only do this for a second, but I'll show off hot dog stand theme for other people who are curious. Um, so there's the hot dog stand theme. It's pretty terrible. All right, let me go back to midnight scent which is a cool one. Uh, Rohan, we want a full JavaScript course if possible. I am working on the advent of JavaScript. Um, I had this up earlier. Uh, do I still have it up? So if you want to uh, sign up for updates for this, um, here's where you can do it. This will be uh, 25 JavaScript challenges starting December 1st. Uh, so you can get access to all of those. Uh, the challenges are free and then solutions you can pay for if you're interested once this actually goes live. So um, we'll have that up hopefully in the next uh, month or so for people to start um, Start getting ready to use. Like sort of them depends on engine implementation. Neg negative numbers change to positive and positive is to negative. Yeah, honestly, it always confuses me. <laughs> um, in real life, V8 uses utilizes quick sort. Yeah, I don't know exactly what they do behind the scenes, but um, all of all the sort algorithms have to have some way of comparing um, two numbers to decide whether or not it should come before or after. And so that's what we're defining Defining is our custom uh, comparator, yeah. All right, last question, I believe this is 20. True or false, two points. Um, and last but not least, uh, math.min greater than, so math.min is the lowest number you can have. Math.max is, the, well, no. That's, I was thinking about this, I was thinking about infinity and negative infinity. Um, math.min, what does math.min return if you pass it no numbers? I don't know, I have no idea what it returns if you pass it no numbers, so let's actually check that out. Um, let's do console log math.min with no parameters, passes infinity and so if you're getting the min of an infinity of no numbers, and then I guess math.max must do uh, negative infinity. So math.min is greater than uh, math.max. Did y'all know infinity and negative infinity were things in JavaScript? That's kind of cool. Um, a useful thing for this is like, if you want to, if you want to figure out like the, the least, um, 
the le the smallest. Let me say how I want to. If you if you let's say you have an array, cons are equals, and you have uh, negative one, um, five, six, seven, and uh, so this is one example of an array. But let's say you have an array where you want to find the lowest number in here, but the numbers can be positive or negative. So if you want to find the lowest one, what you would do is you'd say lowest equals and then set it to negative infinity. I do have to capitalize this negative infinity. And then uh, actually, no, sorry, the other way around. So you'd want to set this to infinity because you don't know you have like, it could be any integer positive or negative. So you set it to the highest thing that you can find. And then you could say, uh, iterate through your array. So iterate through the array. And then say, uh, if element is less than lowest, am I typing? I don't think I am. I think my thing slowed down. There we go. If element is less than lowest, then update lowest. And this should be uh, a let here. Infinity is it's a built-in thing, right? It's definitely a built-in thing. I don't know why that's not recognizing. Let's see. JavaScript infinity. Is it just not right that way? I don't know. They are not, they are not actual real infinity think it's anything above two to the 32nd power. Fair enough. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the specifics. I just know it's the, it's basically the biggest number that JavaScript can handle. Um, so how do I, is this, why is this not max number equals infinity? Why is this not? Am I not? Sp oh, cause it doesn't end in an E that's why. Wow. Um, that is with a Y. So that'll make a difference. And then we can log lowest. So lowest here is negative one. You typed infinity. Yeah, no. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, good catch. So, so yeah, the benefit of this is like you have no idea what numbers are in this array. So, um, so you can't like you can't say okay, well let's start with the lowest to be a hundred million or ten thousand or whatever this is because you might have a number in the array that's bigger than that. So you set it to the biggest number you can and then update accordingly. Yep. Anyway, hopefully that was helpful. I think that was a lot of fun. I wish we were able, we'll definitely do this on, on Twitch. So if people haven't uh, followed on Twitch in the past, um, I'll give you a link to my Twitch channel. That's usually where I do uh, most of my streams, uh, but I like doing YouTube uh, because I get to connect with people that I don't connect with as much on, uh, on Twitch. So that is really cool, but it won't work as well. It looks like for this sort of live stuff, just because of the delay with Twitch, it's usually like a second or two delay or a few seconds, maybe. Uh, so it's not as bad, but there's a link to the Twitch channel. If you're interested, um, I'll add an advent of JavaScript link again, people that are interested in, uh, JavaScript challenges. And also, um, if you haven't listened to our podcast, um, I would greatly appreciate it if you did, uh, like I would appreciate it, but it's also, I think a really good podcast. Um, so I'll give you a link to the compressed FM podcast as well. Um, Andrew, Ooh, Andrew is saying you can do math.min with an, Oh, and spread out the array. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah that's perfect. I thought you were just passing in an array directly. Um, but spreading out the array so that you're passing in each individual number individually. That makes total sense. Yep. That's a great idea. I, <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah. I, that's so much easier and makes so much sense. I just hadn't thought about that. Uh, please show the leaderboard. Um, I will show the leaderboard, uh, but it's not going to mean a whole lot, unfortunately, just because, uh, people weren't able to participate. Um, oh, this is going to say, wait, nine Oh, 20. Oh, this is three, two, one. Okay. So DJ Khaled, Ayush and uh, Sujit, nice. Uh, we'll definitely have to get this set up for um, for people in a different platform um, and send your gift. 
Um, if you if you have an idea for a gift, uh, let me know. So send me a message on Twitter or Discord or something. Um, if you have an idea of a gift for yourself, I'm not saying that I'll necessarily do it, but if it seems reasonable, I will try to uh, I will try to hook you up. Yeah, we got such low numbers on here just because the the delay, but we'll definitely try to get that fixed in the future and do one of these again. Um, also, so I mentioned the Learn, Build, Teach Discord. You can get to it from learnbuildteach.com. We have an organization in GitHub now. Uh, we actually had one, I had forgotten. And uh, what we're gonna do is try to build out the Learn, Build, Teach site during uh, Hacktoberfest. So if you're interested in kind of participating in that regard, um, that that would be really cool. So uh, so yeah, uh, join Discord at learnbuildteach.com. Uh, All right, I am... I'm going to call it. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. I think that was cool. Uh, Will Parr, I think, said that he learned a lot. That's great. I think that's exactly what this should be about. And this could be this could be something I could do more of. I also have thought about doing like solving programming challenges real time on stream. So if people sent me like a, a hacker rank, um, a hacker rank uh, quiz or a problem or a leak code or something like that, I could take those on and try them real time. Uh, and you can see like, how much I would be able to do it or not. Uh, I'm sure I would get plenty stumped, um, but it would be a lot of fun regardless. So anyway, um, all right, I'm gonna call it. Um, you got a couple of cool resources there for things to for things to check out and uh, I'll catch you all later. I'll let you know when we do another another one of these and something else on, uh, on Twitch, but thank you all for hanging out, I appreciate it. Um, hopefully next time you see me, I will have this new camera set up. I'm waiting on the lens to come, Amazon is behind. Uh, but anyway, yes, uh, great to see you all. Thank you. And I will catch you later.